March is Women's History Month. During March, we get to celebrate some women who have done some great things in history, some things that may have been forgotten. So today we're gonna to be looking at some cigars from Casa 1910, Mil Novecientos Diez. They're out of uh, Veracruz, Mexico. And basically on the back of their bag, it tells you that they are a premium cigar and lifestyle brand that captures the national pride and spirit of the Mexican revolution, 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 through exclusive high-end products. So we're gonna talk about it. I got a sampler of cigars from Casa 1910. I did smoke one the other day, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So we shall see what we're gonna be smoking out of the pack today. We're gonna to see which one is going to be the one. This is the one we're gonna be smoking, the San Petrina, the San Petrina. We're gonna tell you the story about it and uh, sit back and relax and have a good time. So uh, I'll be back. Adjust my lights a little bit. Lee Mac 9, 12 baby, and I am back, back once again. I am back once again with another cigar review. Casa 1910. I'm working on my Spanish. I've been working on my Spanish family, but I ain't got all the way up to these big ass numbers. I ain't got that far up in the list yet, but I do have a few things I can say. Like, let's see. Let me find my uh, let me find my app. There we go. Let's see what's on today's uh, list. El Hotel. El Hotel. El Hotel. El Hotel. El Hotel. El Hotel. Ding, ding. Mi Hotel. Mi Hotel. Hey, Mi Hotel. It's my hotel. Donde. Donde, huh? Donde. Uh, Hyundai means where? Donde, Hyundai. <laughs> she said donde. Donde. That means where. So listen, I got all of that, but when it comes up to these numbers, this uh, Mil Novecientos Diez, that's 1900, 1000. Novecientos is 910, 1910, cost of 1910. Anyway, these cigars that we are talking about today uh, debuted in the TPE show, or at the TPE show, 2023, and it is the Sol Dadera edition, the Soldadera, and the Soldaderas are uh, often called Adelitas. They were women in the military who participated in the conflict of the revolution, Mexican revolution, ranging from commanding officers uh, all the way up to something else. This is off of Wikipedia. Ranging from commanding officers to combatants to camp followers. So basically they've got several different cigars in different sizes here uh, in this line. And this I believe is the white line here. So that's what we're gonna be smoking today. And this one is called the San Petrina. San Petrina, San Petrina, Trina. My R doesn't wanna roll that way. Anyway, they have uh, three different ones. The first one is the Coronella. It's a five and a half by 58. Uh, and this one is honoring Amelia Robles. Uh, she fought in the disguise of a man in the Emiliano Zapata Army. So that one has got an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, binder, Brazilian Aracaraca, and a mix of Dominican and Mexican. It's $20 for five and a half by 58. The one we're smoking today is the San Petrina. It's a five by 50 and this honors Petra Herrera. She also fought disguised as a man uh, in the forces of Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa. Uh, she went on to lead a brigade of her own soldadera. So we've got a Connecticut wrapper. We've got a Dominican binder and a mix of Mexican and Dominican 
fillers. Yeah, that's right. And the third one they have is called the Temiente Angela. And this was honoring a soldier that fought with Pancho Villa and Amelia Zapata. Hang on, family. All right, family, we are back. I think the third cigar is the Tenieta Angela 6x52 Toro. And this was a soldier that fought in uh, Pancho Villa and Emilio Zapata's war. This one's got a Habano from an undisclosed location. Double binder, Mexican and Dominican. And the filler is Dominican and Nicaraguan. So these cigars were um, produced at Tobacco Lara Isla in the Dominican Republic. And it's a facility that's owned by Hostos Fernandez Quesada. Y'all know that name, Quesada. And what I found out when I was in the Dominican Republic was it's almost like when I grew up in my town of Elizabeth, New Jersey, there were several large families and those large families, everybody was kind of related to one of those six families, some kind of way. That's the way it is in the Dominican Republic. You know, it's a couple of names at the top, but if you start going back two or three generations, you'll find some of the same names that you know that are on some of the cigars that you have enjoyed over the years. So I'm gonna just leave that right there. And they, uh, they tend to keep the business in the family, so I ain't mad at that. Keep the business in the family. Do what it is you do. All right, let me find me a cut. Straight cut is the way, baby. No V cut. <sighs> I'll tell you, child, I was, uh, oh boy. I was fussing with my favorite V cut lover earlier today, but uh, you know. Now that things are straight, I'm still gonna go straight cut. So hey, it is what it is, family. This is that Connecticut wrapper, so you want to make sure that you uh, take it very nice and easy on there. Um, this is my cutter. I don't loan it out, but I did kind of lick my wrapper a little bit before I... Oh, I got a good trick, and I, I didn't think about it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do this now. Uh, when we were in Dominican Republic, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Francisco said, Connecticut rappers in the Northeast, in the cold. He said, what you do is you take a little bit of water and just rub it down the wrapper before you smoke it. Not the day before, just right before you smoke it, just a little bit of water. And that will kind of go into that wrapper and it'll keep it from splitting. So I'm gonna try that. I'm glad I remembered that. You know, I remember some things, a lot of things I do forget, but some things I remember. Anyway, Brother Dexter, we gonna do what we do, Brother Dexter. You know how it is. It is what it is. It was what it was. What it was is all gone and over with, so we leave that alone, and now we gonna move on forward. That's what we gonna do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I even got, oh look, I got my DBL lighter. So anyway, had a great time in the Dominican Republic. Got to see my brother Francisco in his factory. I'm telling everybody again, if you don't know DBL, you need to try them. Anyway, today is Casa 1910, Casa 1910, Casa, Casa 1910. I'm gonna say that a lot faster, 1902. Damn, I screwed that all the way up. 1902. Casa 1910. Brother Dexter, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, cause we wanna take you home. What a day, family, what a day, what a day. Here we go, let's go, y'all. other videos I was watching Hochi Blanco light a cigar in the factory and we do all this specific and it's got to be lit and we got to do the Kirby Allison use up all our damn butane and we got to do circles and all of this shit right here Hochi was like So anyway, Mac, what I was saying was, I mean, like, no attention to how the cigar was lit. Nice draw. 
The construction feels very nice. Hmm. Very smooth. We're gonna see what the we're gonna see what the retro hail is giving kind of right away. Hmm. Creamy. Ooh, I like the creamy. I like the creamy. Little bit of pepper on the retro hail. White pepper. Now I smoked another one of the blends that had a uh, a lot of this Dominican Mexican filler, and what I noticed in the Mexican filler is very distinctly white pepper. And so I'm picking up that same white pepper as well. Uh, the strength is also a different type of strength. The strength kind of hits you in the back of the head. And this one's got a. Mexican and Dominican filler, Dominican binder, Connecticut wrapper. Mm. There is a sweet, there's a little bit of floral note, still on the retro hail. Very nice mouth feel. That white pepper is interesting. I like that white pepper. Uh, it feels like it's like a slick all over my tongue. Retro hail. I got a little bit of orange peel. Hoshi Blanco also said to somebody, you know what, I've been smoking cigars a long time, I ain't never tasted none of that crap. <laughs> y'all that stuff, y'all are tough, I ain't taste none of that. Juan come manzanas. I think that's it, el come manzanas. He's at the, uh, somewhere else. Lo siento. I like words that sound cool in Spanish, lo siento, lo siento. Disculpe. Disculpe is one of those hard ass words to say. I'm gonna get it though, because when I go back, I'm in, I'm intended to go back to one of these countries and really just speak in the native language. Cause you get a lot more uh you get a lot more grace when you speak the native language. Alright, family, I'll be back. All right, family, we are smoking this San Petrina. San Petrina, I got to see how you uh, say that, but she is burning very well. One of the things I like about this cigar is you smoke a lot of Nicaraguan or Dominican or Honduran. You get a similar profile in your mouth all the time. You have certain tastes in your mouth. But with this one, the taste is different. The finish is kind of clean, but it's a white pepper slick on your on your tongue, there's not a whole lot of middle to it. Now, there are other cigars I have complained and said, well, it feels like it's got the bite of the pepper, but there's not enough middle to it. This doesn't have a whole lot of middle, but why is it not feeling lacking? I don't know. Let me see. Retro hail is smooth. A little bit of toast. Now, I'm going to tell you, that retro hail, that retro hail is giving you some complexity. White pepper, sweet, floral, orange peel, toast. I've got all these flavors that I've picked out in the retro hail, and it just leaves that nice wet pepper, wet pepper, white pepper slick on your, on your tongue. Very nice. $16 now, $16. Uh, let's talk about that $16 price. Lee Mac 912, let's talk about that $16 price. Ooh, buddy. This is a new one. Uh, I don't know what they're going to be selling for. I don't, I, haven't, I don't see anybody selling them yet, but they should be available at some point. But $16 is a little expensive. So what I say about $16, I don't mind $16 if I am getting feel like I'm getting my money's worth. I'm getting something different, it's a good cigar, I like it. Now, the mascara line, let's look at the mascara line. Mascara line's kinda thick, that's the burn line. Kinda says to me, 
Maybe the tobacco is not aged that much. I don't know. It's also a little bit wavy, so the blend is not quite burning straight down the, the wrapper and the binder and the filler. But it tastes good, so that's all right with me. I like the fact that it tastes good. All right, family. We're going to find something to put in the glass. We're going to take a little sip of something. Uh, let's find the glass. Hey. I got something. Since we are in Mexico, we're going to have a little bit of... What the hell you call this shit? It's not tequila, cause it's not made out of the blue out coffee. It's the mezcal. This is a local mezcal, Del Magre Vida de San Luis Del Rio. So we're gonna have a little mezcal with this. We're gonna have a little sip with that. And I think that's what I had with the last cigar. And I thought the uh, tequila and the mezcal was a very nice pairing with it. Has some smokiness to it, similar to scotch. Some scotches. Uh, Unaged spirit, salute. Mmm. Very good. All right, family, I'll be back. All right, all right, all right, family. We are still smoking the Casa 1910, the San Petrina. Five by 50. Good cigar. She is burning well, she is burning well. Still burning good. Uh, the taste is still good. Now I talked about the middle. This has got a long finish on it. Oh, let me tell you, the people just keep calling in the middle of my damn cigar review. The middle of this cigar. It's got a nice creaminess. It's got a nice, it's got a wood tone to it. White pepper for sure. It's got some sweetness to it. That almost tastes like balsa wood. I used to build models as a kid, model airplanes. That kind of reminds me of the smell of balsa wood. Strength, medium strength. Connecticut wrap, but definitely medium strength, solid medium. Not a medium plus, solid medium right now. So I'm really digging the cigar right now. Uh, $16, pretty good. Good pairing with the Mezcal as well, so I like it. All right, family, we'll be back. All right, family, all right, all right, all right. We are coming down, not to the end, because it's still not hot. Uh, it is still burning well. It is still smoking well. Very flavorful cigar. Very complex cigar. Complex retro hail. $16. $16 is going to be the only thing that gives you the pause. But would I pay $16 for this cigar again? It's a Robusto. Absolutely. That's four words. Absolutely. I would absolutely pay $16 for this cigar because I feel like the smoking experience justifies the $16 price. I've been saying that a lot of you cigar makers are just putting out average cigars and putting a high price on it. This is a way above average cigar and the price is justified in my mind. It's not gonna be a banger. It's picking up to about medium plus in the strength, uh, but that flavor is just beautiful. It's like, if you like that white pepper, crisp clean finish, complexity. If you retrohale, definitely is a good cigar for you. You're gonna miss a lot of it if you're one that does not retrohale, but you definitely will get a lot of flavors and complexity in your mouth as well. So either way you smoke, you will be able to get something out of this cigar from Casa 1910, the 1910 DS. This is the, uh, ooh, I can't say the name of it. It is the San Petrina, San Petrina. This is a new one, so look for this. It's gonna be hitting the store shelves, I guess, at some point soon. I don't know, but definitely I think it's one you should check out. For the price, I'm gonna give it a three and a quarter. Even though it's $16, I think three and a quarter is above average for what you get for the price. Flavor, definitely a four. Construction, a five. She's burned well the entire time. She was a little wonky up front, but definitely straightened itself out. 
Uh, I haven't had to relight light it or, or, or do anything to fix the burn. Overall smoking experience, 3.75, which gives this one a 4 out of 5 on the Lee Mac 912 scale. So if you know my scale, you know this one is going to be in the running for one of my top lists of the year. Good cigar. Uh, thank my brother who sent these over from Casa 1910. Again, you have to try things that you have not tried because you never know. You might just find your next favorite cigar. Family life is full of challenges. Life is full of ups and downs. Life is full of misunderstandings. Life is full of good and bad. But what you got to learn to do is you got to learn to keep the good and throw away the bad. Because if you keep focusing on the bad, you'll never get to enjoy the good. There are things that go on in your life and you say, man, I really have some good memories from the good. Really good memories. So much so that you tend to forget the bad. And I'll give you an example. Usually what happens after someone passes away, it might be somebody that you had an issue with. And some things that you got, you know, y'all had fights and arguments or whatever. But you know what? When you look back at them, all you remember is the good times. Most of the times, unless it was just terribly bad. I, I'm just saying, you remember the good times. Um, I talk about my buddy Jeff. I talk about my girlfriend, Deborah. I didn't speak to Deborah for 30 years, but she's passed on now. I remember the good times. I talk about my buddy Jeff. We ain't never really had no bad times because we was buddies and we hung out and we got into a bunch of shit. Uh, but Jeff was my man. So the things I remember are the good times. You know, my buddy Antoine has passed away. The things I remember are the good times. Same thing with my dad. My dad wasn't the best dad in the world. He's got some kids that you could talk to about him and they'll be like, yeah, I ain't got nothing good to say about him. But he was my dad. So my dad shaped who I was, who I am today. He shaped some things that I'm just like my father. There's some things that I'm absolutely opposite of my father because I didn't want to be nothing like him in certain regards. So it's like uh, one of those old sayings, you know, if I want to chew the chicken, chew the meat and spit out the bones, let me do that. I'm going to chew the meat and spit out the bones. Sometimes you got to do things your own way, no matter if anybody else understands it or not. It's okay. You stick to what you know. Sometimes we got to change. Sometimes we got to make changes. And you say, you know what? I was really on some fuck shit and I got to make a change for the better. And so you just have to, you know, suck up your pride every once in a while. And that's what you got to do. Say, you know what? I'm just going to make a change and we're going to move forward from here. Somebody will get that. When you wake up in the morning, you got to say to yourself, today is going to be another great day. Today was another great day. The Mezcal was absolutely a great comparison with this. Tequila, Mezcal, I say is a great drink for this Casa 1910 cigars. Both of them that I had, I drank the Mezcal with it. It was a great pairing. I like it. Something like an IPA or a bourbon uh, probably would wash it out too much. A rum probably would be good, lower alcohol proof. Uh, sipping rum, Diplomatico, something from the Dominican Republic. Uh, what I got, Black Tide up there. It's another good rum, good sipping rum. Not a Bacardi or a Bacardi Gold. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about sipping rum. Anyway, family, when you tell your subconscious mind that it's going to be another great day, your subconscious mind believes you and it hears you and it doesn't know the difference between the truth and the lie. So you might as well tell it something good. That's what I've been doing every day for 16 years. Have I had problems? Oh, I got some problems. I had some problems that I worked on trying to fix today. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do when I grow up. I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do with my trucking business. I love it. It's something that I love. And it hurts that I can't do it the way that I want to do it right now. So I might have to do something different until I could do something better. Sometimes you got to hold on. You got to hold on. I, had a, I heard a preacher say one time he was, you know, used to have toll, toll booths or whatever. And, uh, you know, you would throw your change in the booth or whatever. And, you know, preacher say he came up there, he threw his money in there and, and he was just sitting there. The cars behind him was honking, honking. Finally, the lady that came over and said, sir, how can I help you? He, she, he said, I'm waiting for my change to come. Sometimes you got to wait for your change to come. It ain't easy to wait. It's hard to sit back and wait for the change. But sometimes you got to wait till your change is going to come because the change is going to come. My buddy Tyrone used to tell me, he said, Lee, 
three stages in life. You're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or get ready to head into a storm. You just gotta figure out where you are in life and get ready for it. All right, family, I'm out. Turn my collar around, get up out the pulpit, do what I gotta do, help everybody is doing well. Shout out to my brother Alexander Brandon. Shout out to Big O. Shout out to brother Dexter as always. Shout out to Harry out in Detroit. He don't live in Detroit, but shout out to you, brother Harry. Shout out to my brother Brent Murdoch. And as always, shout out to my number one moderator, Sister Latanya. She is always on the scene. She always, uh, you know, does her best to keep me on the straight and the narrow. You know, I fight against it sometimes because I'm hard headed, you know, and I'm stubborn, but you know, it is what it is. She that way too. <laughs> All right, family, we out of here. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.